Today, I'm putting my DIY fan invention to the test against a massive industrial fan. Let's see if my creation can keep up. When we think of products, we often assume that industrial ones are superior in terms of quality and performance. We've all been conditioned to believe that a well-known brand name is synonymous with excellence. But is that always the case? Can a DIY invention really hold a candle to a product made by a massive corporation? That's what we're going to find out today. I've always been fascinated by the idea that with a little creativity and resourcefulness, you can create something that rivals a commercial product. It's not just about saving money. It's about the satisfaction of knowing that you made something with your own hands. And who knows, maybe we'll discover that the DIY route is actually the better option. We've heard the phrase, you get what you pay for. But what if that's not entirely true? What if with a little bit of know-how and some readily available materials, you can create something that's just as good, if not better, than a product made by a giant corporation? That's the question we're trying to answer today. Next, let's move on to the DIY fan itself. I used a combination of materials, including 3D printed parts, copper wire, and a small motor to create my fan. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but I'm hoping it'll be able to hold its own against the industrial fan. Speaking of which, our industrial fan is a behemoth of a machine with a powerful motor and a sturdy construction. It's clearly built to last, but will it outperform my DIY creation? The DIY fan's motor is capable of spinning at 1,800 RPM, and it's powered by a 12-volt battery. The industrial fan, on the other hand, has a much more powerful motor that spins at 3,000 RPM, and it's plugged directly into the wall. The industrial fan is also much larger, with a diameter of 24 inches, compared to the DIY fan's 12 inches. To build the DIY fan, I started by designing the 3D printed parts, which took a few hours to print. Then I assembled everything and added the copper wire to create the fan blades. The whole process took about a day, and it cost me around $50 in materials. The industrial fan, on the other hand, costs a whopping $200, and it's clearly built to be much more durable. Now it's time to put both fans to the test. We'll be measuring their airflow, noise level, and power consumption to see which one comes out on top. We'll also be testing them in a variety of scenarios, from circulating air in a small room to blowing air directly onto a surface. The results are in, and they're pretty interesting. In terms of airflow, the industrial fan is clearly the winner, moving a massive 5,000 CFM of air. The DIY fan, on the other hand, managed to move about 1,500 CFM of air. However, when it comes to noise level, the DIY fan is much quieter, producing only 30 decibels of noise compared to the industrial fan's 60 decibels. When it comes to power consumption, the DIY fan is a clear winner, using only 20 watts of power compared to the industrial fan's 100 watts. So while the industrial fan may be more powerful, it's also much more energy hungry. Overall, both fans have their strengths and weaknesses. But I have to say, I'm impressed with how well the DIY fan performed. So what does it all mean? Well, it seems that the DIY fan was able to hold its own against the industrial giant, albeit with some limitations. It's clear that with a little creativity and resourcefulness, you can create something that rivals a commercial product. Whether or not the DIY fan is truly better than the industrial one is up for debate, but it's certainly a viable alternative. Thanks for watching, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on DIY inventions. What would you like to see tested next?